Today we're going to learn how to graph cosecant, secant, tangent, and cotangent. Remember sign? Use the unit circle or your notes from 9.4 to fill out the table and then graph. Because cosecant is the reciprocal function of sine, we can just find the reciprocal of each sine value to complete the table for cosecant. Remember, the reciprocal of zero is undefined. Now graph cosecant. The undefined values represent vertical asymptotes. One upward facing U and one downward facing U complete a cycle of cosecant, which means cosecant has the same period as sine, two pi. When we graph cosecant, we will graph the corresponding sine function and then sketch cosecant on top. Just remember, the sine function is not part of the cosecant function. This is the cosecant graph. We just graph sine to help us out. Here are the things to remember about cosecant. The midline intercepts of sine represent the asymptotes for cosecant. The maximum values of sine become local minima for cosecant. The minimum values of sine become local maxima for cosecant. Because cosecant is periodic like sine, we will continue to have an infinite number of vertical asymptotes. The quote first asymptote is at zero, the next at pi, the next at two pi, the frequency of these asymptotes happens every time we add pi to zero, or subtract pi from zero for that matter. To write an expression that represents all possible vertical asymptotes, I could write zero plus any integer amount of pi. In math, we use the variable n to represent integers, like in sequences and series. So I will write that as zero plus n times pi, or simply n pi. Let's copy our table for cosine from 9.4 notes or use the unit circle to fill out the table. Now flip each y value of cosine to find the corresponding values of secant, the reciprocal function of cosine. Since we get all secant values from cosine anyways, secant also has the natural period of 2 pi. Now graph it below. You're going to have one upward facing u split in half this time and one downward facing u. Here are the things to remember about cosecant. The midline intercepts of cosine represent the asymptotes for secant. The maximum values of cosine become local minima for secant, and the minimum values of cosine become local maxima for secant. To write an expression representing the vertical asymptotes of secant, I would quote start at pi halves and add any additional amount of pi. So pi halves plus n pi. And like cosecant, this is the graph of secant. We only graph cosine to help us graph secant. Let's graph f of theta equals three secant of theta over two plus three pi halves. First, find all the important information for graphing the corresponding cosine function. I'll call that g of theta equals three cosine of theta over two plus three pi halves. In this case, b, the coefficient of theta, is one half, and c is negative three pi halves. Recall that P1, our phase shift, is C over B, and the new period is 2 pi divided by B. P5 can be found by adding the period to P1, and the other values are equally spaced. Now graph G of theta. Remember the midline intercepts of cosine become vertical asymptotes for secant, and the upward u shares a point with cosine's max, and the downward u shares a point with cosine's min. Now you have graphed one period of secant. Knowing the pattern, you could continue graphing more than one cycle. You can erase the corresponding cosine function, or you can keep it on the graph. For number two, let's find the important information for graphing the corresponding sine function. G of theta equals two sine of theta plus five pi over six 
minus one. This one actually has a vertical shift. The midline will be at negative one. Go ahead and graph the corresponding sine function. And now graph cosecant. The midline intercepts of sine become the vertical asymptotes for cosecant. Draw one upward facing u at sine's max and one downward facing u at sine's minimum. Now we've graphed one cycle of cosecant. Let's use the unit circle to fill out the following table for tangent. Now graph tangent below. Tangent also has periodic repetition like sine and cosine, but tangent begins to repeat values after pi. So the period of tangent is pi, the length from zero to pi. The five MVPs of tangent include two x-intercepts and a vertical asymptote directly in between. The next vertical asymptote is at three pi halves. Following the pattern, the vertical asymptote to the left will be at negative pi halves. Each vertical asymptote can be found by taking the quote first asymptote pi halves and adding any additional amount of pi. Now find the reciprocal of the tangent values to fill out the table for cotangent. Cotangent has the same period as its reciprocal function tangent, graph cotangent. The five MVPs for cotangent include two vertical asymptotes at P1 and P5 and an x-intercept directly in between. Notice that the curves of tangent are steadily increasing and the curves for cotangent are steadily decreasing. The transformations of tangent and cotangent look just like sine and cosine with a, b, c, and k, but the difference is that we use the formula pi divided by b to find a transformed period for tangent or cotangent because the natural period for those functions is pi. Let's graph f of theta equals 2 tangent of 2 theta plus pi halves. b is 2 and c is negative pi halves. So our phase shift is c over b. The period is pi over b, making it pi halves. Use the same process as when graphing sine and cosine to find the rest of the five MVPs. p5 is p1 plus the period and the other values are equally spaced. Oh look, P3 is directly between negative pi fourths and pi fourths, which is zero. That makes P2 negative pi over eight, which is directly between zero and negative pi fourths. And P4 is at positive pi over eight, directly between zero and pi fourths. There is no vertical shift and the vertical stretch is two. When drawing your axes, remember to extend to both the left and the right so you can graph two full cycles of tangent. For the y values, you can follow the formula I gave or notice the shape of tangent's parent graph. Tangent begins at the midline, increases to a above the midline, in this case two units. P3 for tangent is a vertical asymptote. P4 is below the midline by a, two units, and P5 is back at the midline. Now continue the pattern to the left and right to graph one more period. Because your period is pi halves, the spacing between your vertical asymptotes will be pi halves. Try finding all the necessary information for graphing number four, and then press play when you're ready to graph. 
I extended the x or theta axis to the right to graph one more steadily decreasing wave of cotangent. Once we've drawn and labeled our axes, remember the overall shape of a period of cotangent. P1 and P5 are vertical asymptotes and cotangent steadily decreases. So P2 will be above the midline by a half unit since A is one half. P3 will be at the midline and P4 will be below the midline half a unit. Now we've graphed two full periods. And that is graphing cosecant, secant, tangent, and cotangent.